Fossil whales are found all the time, or at least it seems that way. Maybe not quite as often as dinosaurs, but almost. Every single one helps fill in a spot in the evolution of these biggest of animals, perhaps even more than the dinosaurs. There has recently been an influx of these ancient blubber beasts from the land of the long white cloud, and a brand new one has just been published. Let's meet Niharoa. New Zealand has an abundance of ocean-going mammals. In fact, it has half of the world's species of whales and dolphins. One might justifiably think this is meaningless, since they live in the ocean and can go anywhere in the world they want, but ecology and evolution definitely carries a different tune. So many of these whales exist only around New Zealand because of its unique submarine landscape. The continental shelf drops quickly into a number of extremely deep underwater canyons. In addition, a warm current from the north meets a colder one from the south, which causes nutrients from deep within the ocean to be carried upward, a phenomenon that helps to support all types of marine life, from plankton and krill to dolphins and whales. This sort of thing has been going on for an awfully long time, which has also resulted in New Zealand's fossil record being stuffed to the brim with all sorts of bizarre ancient whales. The collections of the University of Otago Geology Museum are particularly rich in late Oligocene early toothed whales. The Oligocene is an important period in whale evolution as it represents a transitional period in toothed whale evolution with an increased diversity of species and morphologies. I have already recovered the recently published Nihohae, and now a new team of researchers consisting of Ambre Kost, the late Robert Ewan Fordyce, and Carolina Locke have published a specimen of another new whale in the Journal of the Royal Society of New Zealand in November of 2023. This specimen, OU-22162, is a 50cm, 19.7-inch long, near-complete skull, missing a bit of the nose and some parts of the cheek and the entire jaw. A bunch of the ear bones were preserved and the skull had six teeth still in place, with 16 rattling about, all loose lack. The skull was collected by Fordyce, A. Grebneff, C. Sampson, and G. Ferguson in late January of 1992 from the top of a cliff overlooking the northwestern bank of the Awamoko Stream in Tokarahi, North Otago, New Zealand. The specimen was retrieved from glauconitic Otakaiki limestone, with the sediment being a calcarinite, fine, light yellow-white sand, bioclastic limestone. The skull was retrieved from a stratigraphically higher location than the 2017 published Oamakoa Tokarahi, which was from the transitional lithology between the Kokoamu greensand and Otekaiki limestone. The suggested age for Oamakoa was 25 to 25.4 million years. When you cannot use radiometric dating for sediments, you can often use fossils preserved within to tell you roughly how old the rocks are. This can be done with large or macroscopic fossils, such as bivalves, ammonites, and stuff. Or it can be done with microscopic fossils, such as those of foraminifera, spores, and dinoflagellates. In the case of the new whale specimen, the researchers used the tiny shells or tests of forams, specifically of the species Globoquadrina de Hiskins, to date the rock layer of the new specimen to between 25.2 and 23 million years old. As you can see, the skull is of a dolphin-grade whale with a long pointy snoot that ends in a fan of tusk-like teeth that stick directly out and forward like some sort of bizarre undersea mammalian flytrap. Something that may be familiar to those who watched my Niho Ha'e video. The reason as to the similarity will soon become apparent. The research team decided to name the new beast Niho Roa Remaea derived from the Maori language with niho for teeth and roa for being long, in reference to the long crowns of its teeth. The species, Remaea, is derived from re for ivory or tusk and maea for emerging, in reference to incompletely emerged tusk-like first incisors. 
when all the traits preserved in the skull of Nihoroa were tallied up and placed into a phylogenetic software, the team found that the whale places within the Waipatiidae group, which is a group of toothed whales that convergently evolved dolphin-like shapes despite technically not being dolphins nor super closely related to the dolphins. However, this is up to interpretation, because some analyses have found the Waipatiidae to belong within the greater Inioidea group, which is one of three groups to which all living river dolphins belong. That means the term river dolphin is not evolutionarily valid, and that river dolphins have convergently evolved multiple times from different groups of technically related whale groups. So it's a little muddy, though more dolphin-like whales such as Nihoroa help to narrow down these groups. Nihoroa was found to be, unsurprisingly, most closely related to the other basket full of daggers, Nihohae, as well as a yet-to-be-named specimen. Edicetus is their oldest relative. The laterally oriented incisors of Nihoroa were possibly used for slashing and stunning prey, as in Nihohae. However, the under eruption of the first incisors may suggest that these teeth were less used in feeding. In other whales, a similar pattern of retained or poorly erupted teeth is known in female narwhals and beaked whales. In narwhals, the tusks remain embedded in the jaw, erupting in less than 15% of the females, whilst in males, tusks are commonly present. It has been hypothesized that the primary function of the narwhal's tusk is for sexual display and additional sensory ability. The tusk, however, is not necessary for survival, as some males and most females lack them. In many species of beaked whales, males have a single pair of tusk-like teeth, which are present in females, though not fully erupted. In species such as Mesoplodon bidens, there are also modifications in the bone structure of the jaw in males to further support the antagonistic use of the teeth, them fighting boys. It has been suggested that similar bony modifications such as the distally expanded rostrum in certain squalodontids may be a characteristic of sexual dimorphism or ontogeny. However, considering the limited available evidence of sexual dimorphism in tusked toothed whales, it is not possible to determine if the teeth of Nihoroa are a sexually dimorphic display feature. Whilst it is possible that this specimen of Nihoroa is a female, this cannot be reliably confirmed. I wonder how many more flytrap mouthed dagger baskets existed. Only time will tell. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.